T minus 20 seconds. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. Flight computer has control of the vehicle. Do we see anything on the sensors? That's a problem. Nothing right now. Nothing. Go for launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, man. What? It's kind of amazing that this window of opportunity is open for life to go beyond Earth. And we just don't know how long that window is going to be open. But the thing that gets me most fired up is that creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. It would be so exciting to wake up in the morning and think that that's that's what's happening. at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it prepares to launch at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Time from historic Pad 39A and Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Good afternoon and welcome to the webcast of SpaceX's CRS-12 mission uh, to launch to resupply the International Space Station. My name is Tom Perderio and I'm a firmware engineer in the avionics department here at SpaceX. 
Now, today's mission will mark the final new Cargo Dragon spacecraft to visit the ISS, with all future CRS launches from SpaceX to be conducted with reused Dragon spacecraft. Now, on board Dragon today are 6,000 pounds of cargo, including food, crew provisions, medical supplies, fuel, and air for the station, as well as a number of research experiments, which we'll talk about more during the webcast, or later on during the webcast. Uh, also today, after the Falcon 9 drops that Dragon spacecraft into orbit, the first stage will be uh, attempting to land at our LZ-1 landing zone back at Cape Canaveral, just a few miles south of Kennedy Space Center, where we're launching from today. On your screen, you can see a beautiful shot of Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Let's take a look at exactly what you can see on your screen right now. Uh, at the center of the screen is the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, this rocket is comprised of two main stages. Then at bottom, two-thirds of the rocket or so is the first stage. This blasts the rocket off from liftoff in just about 11 minutes from now to about 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And then on top of that is the second stage, which takes the Dragon spacecraft the, west, the rest of the way into orbit. Uh, at the very top of the rocket, that nose cone looking thing at the very top, that is the Dragon and its trunk. That Dragon is currently loaded with about 6,000 pounds of supplies and experiments for the ISS. Uh, in the back of, this, of the view, you can see the uh, fixed service structure and rotating structure. These are left over from the shuttle era of this pad. Uh, mind you, today is an instantaneous launch window, so if we don't get a chance to launch at exactly 12.45 p.m. today, we will be having to attempt again on another date. Just a small correction, that is a liftoff at 12.31 p.m. Eastern Time today. <clears throat> now here at SpaceX, we conduct our go, no-go poll of the rocket at about T minus 78 minutes. This is when the launch director pulls all of the launch teams and makes sure that all systems in the rocket are good to go for a launch. So at T minus 78 minutes, we did have that go, no-go poll, and all systems are go for launch. Uh, we started loading liquid uh, rocket, or sorry, RP-1 fuel, that is our liquid kerosene fuel, into the rocket at about T minus 70 minutes, and then started loading our oxidizer liquid oxygen at about T minus 45 minutes. We're just about full, uh, full on both the RP-1 and liquid oxygen, and we'll be full uh, topped off at about T minus 5 and T minus 3 minutes, respectively. All in all, that is 1 million pounds total of rocket fuel and liquid oxygen. Our liquid helium pressurant uh, started loading at about T minus 23 minutes, and we're almost done with that. Uh, engine chill just started, or is just about to start at T minus 10 minutes. This is when we flush those engines with liquid oxygen and get them ready uh, to receive their cryogenic propellants. Uh, right now, weather is looking fantastic, as you can see on the camera. Uh, we monitor a few uh, weather conditions here for launch. One of them is anvil clouds and lightning. Obviously, those look uh, pretty good right now. Uh, no, no lightning in sight at the Cape. Uh, other things that we monitor are low-level winds and upper-altitude winds. Uh, both of those are looking fantastic. We just had a report back from the uh, launch, from the weather balloons that we launch about every 30 minutes, and upper-altitude winds are looking pretty great. So with the Falcon 9 getting ready to launch, let's talk about what's on board the Dragon today. Uh, in addition to the food, water, and provisions for the crew, there's also a bunch of very interesting science experiments going up today, uh, one of which is an augmented reality system to help the crew better organize their tasks and equipment storage on board the station. There's also a circadian rhythm experiment that's designed to allow scientists to observe how the crew reacts to the rapid changes in the day and night cycles on board the station. In terms of scientific equipment, uh, today the Dragon is bringing up what's called the Cosmic Ray Energetics and Mass Experiment, or CREAM. And this is a highly sensitive cosmic ray energy detector uh, for measuring the cosmic ray backgrounds of outer space. Uh, we also have a protein crystallization experiment, which is designed to observe protein behaviors in microgravity in order to learn more about the causes of Parkinson's disease. Also going up today is a commercial supercomputer experiment that's designed to test the latest generation of commercial electronics against the harsh radiation effects of space. Now, most of this cargo is loaded well in advance of the launch date. However, we do have what's called a late load period, about six hours before the rocket launches. Uh, as you can see here, that late load period uh, happens while the rocket is still horizontal on top of the transporter erector. 
This gives SpaceX engineers a last minute chance to load any cargo that is extremely time sensitive. This includes anything that's refrigerated or any science experiments that need to be prepared right up until uh, the launch day. So engineers can load those supplies through the forward hatch of the Dragon. Once that forward hatch is secured with all of the late load cargo, the Dragon is then buttoned up to protect it from the harsh environments of uh, launch and liftoff. And then the rocket is, is rolled up to the launch pad and hoisted vertical. Like I was saying earlier, uh, this is a instantaneous launch window. Uh, we have to launch at exactly 12.31 Eastern Time. If we don't, uh, we're going to be attempting to get at the earliest possible time. Uh, so uh, the, once we launch that Dragon into orbit, the first stage of the rocket is going to be coming back towards landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. That first stage is going to turn around and execute three burn maneuvers. The first burn maneuver is what's known as a boost back burn. This just cancels out all of the horizontal velocity the rocket picked up on its way to orbit and sends it back towards Cape Canaveral. After that boost back burn, there's another burn called the re-entry burn. Uh, this happens just as the rocket is approaching the top of the atmosphere to slow it down and make sure that that thick atmosphere doesn't damage the engines on its way back down. And then finally, right before the rocket hits the, or gets towards the pad, uh, we fire the engines one more time in what's known as a landing burn. This takes the rocket from just about a few hundred meters off the pad all the way down to a soft touchdown at LZ-1 in Cape Canaveral. I think I fixed it, y'all. I'm gonna zoom the phone all the way out, and I'm going to actually go to my camera and start recording over there. launch is uh, about to go I'm going to just um, I think I fixed it y'all I'm going to zoom the phone all the way out and I'm going to actually go to my camera and start recording over there yeah there we that's, go that's really what I want here I'm going to try and keep up with Falcon as much as I can with the phone but yeah audio's on now thank you no promises excellent y'all all right that doesn't look like it's dropping any frames does it that looks like it's good to go that's fantastic. So now we have the full thing. Water is actually flowing, can confirm. I guess, you know something? Oh. The encoders are trying to encode that water, which is basically static. Oh, yeah. Right? So maybe tilting up the camera. Yeah, getting the getting the water off the frame. Let's see, is Falcon still venting? Might be a thing. No, it is Apparently. Not. It looks good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Could see All right. Earlier, so. so I'm still here, y'all. Way better. Nice, dude. That's fantastic. Um, so in case you were wondering, we are standing by for the launch of CRS-11. It's a commercial resupply mission going up to the ISS. Yeah, um, I'm Das. I'm here with Mater. Mater's Hi. over here next to me. Um, also, Mike. One, 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 one. Too many ones. I don't happens. know how many ones he has in his name. He's over here hanging out with us as well. Um, we're just outside the gate of the uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The badging office is like right behind us here, and the 45th Space Wing gate is right here. But there's a public area with some like 
concrete pads. There's some bleachers and stuff you can hang out at, but uh, this is a nice public place to come and watch the launch from. Now, the launches are across the way from us over here, and I need to remember to stand over this way a little bit. The launches are actually across the water from us here. I've got the camera zoomed in on the VAB, um, if you check that out, like that. Um, that's actually the vehicle assembly building back there. That is not where the launch is going to be going from. What's the which? Which one? Sierra 7? No, the uh, one on the pad. The one on the pad was Amos? Amos? Almost six, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's fine, it's fine. We're like <laughs> like multiple streams happening within like 10 feet of each other Stream here. Streamception. Right now. Boom. So um, that's the vehicle assembly building. That's the big it's, iconic uh, building over at NASA. Our, our launch is actually going to be happening. Uh, oh my gosh, I cry at this so. tripod, y'all. 39A being the. This is actually for those that are there. the 100th launch out of the 39A. Right there. So, Kind of, uh, kind of noteworthy. And that's, let me put it down a little bit more. Guys, I am, I'm dealing with a little bit of a field expedient tripod setup here. So bear with me. My other tripod did not make it. Oh my gosh, I'm so spoiled with that other tripod. There you go. Going as good if you zoomed in, it would look like cotton candy. Hey, so there is Falcon out that way, y'all, and I'm gonna get a little bit of wind and stuff like that. Meanwhile, on Godzilla Island, <laughs> look at the mirage. The frames are way better. Yeah, I think we fixed the frames, Blue Land. I think we did fix the frames. Um, is that an island? No, that's not an island. There, there are some islands between here and there, um, but the rocket is not actually on an island. There's an actual piece of land. Well, I guess it is technically on an island. The entire thing is an island. Yeah, the entire like space center is an island, but. The, the one little bit of trees there is not an island. That's uh, not where the rocket is. Uh, is that focused, right, y'all, or does that color. look like it's not focusing on what we want it to focus yeah, it. No PowerPoint? Now, so. Excellent, Mycroft. <laughs> there is a uh, alligator warning sign. So. There is an alligator. I mean, there's an alligator warning sign right in front of us. I don't even want to move the camera, though. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to just uh, so America is an island. Curve. I think that's a continent, right Kuju man. I'm pretty sure that's referred to as a continent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might just be haze. How's your how's your view look, Mater? Uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, mine looks like it's not quite. Yeah, let me switch it to manual and see if there's anything I can do. I don't know, Chad. If that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, I need to. I wish I had manual on mine. Yeah. Let me see here. It's also a wildlife preserve. You're right. Wait, the space center is on an island. No, it is. So, so the entire uh, what is the name of the wildlife preserve it's on? Merritt Island. Uh, Merritt, no, Merritt Island's. The Merritt Island's the next one in. Yeah. There's actually two islands out, Bremo. There's Merritt Island. There's the mainland. Then there's Merritt Island. Then there's Cape, Cape Canaveral. Cape Station. It was just. It's on a different island, isn't it? That's all on the same island over there. Okay. I'm so confused. You can look at it on maps. Merritt Island National Wildlife Reserve. Thank you, Reptile. I appreciate it. Quick question. Um, is Revlo shutting down? <laughs> this view always you makes me want to catch contact. Nice. I heard about that the moment. Uh, ETA on the launch and landing. We're coming up, uh, what time is it right now? 47. So we have about 20 minutes till the launch. Um, yesterday, the weather was 60% go due to the anvil cloud rules, the cumulus cloud rules, and then precipitation that they thought might be in the area because it's Florida and you get the bubbling up thunderstorms that happen every afternoon. We've been looking pretty good because I think that the uh, the PGO, the PGO is 10 right now, right? So it's 90% go. go. That's fantastic. This, it's actually a really nice day. Yesterday, we couldn't actually get the equipment out of the car. It was raining on us. Yeah, it was, it Just was not awful. 30 minutes before the launch. Yeah. Um, so it was pouring down, sort of like you couldn't even see where you were going. Today, it's been a fantastic yeah. day. I mean, I, I had just finished setting up and he wasn't even halfway done. Heck yeah. <laughs> what? Well, you were. <laughs> were you poking at me? I'm just um, saying how it was. It was. It's nice here today, though. Yeah, they upgraded to 90%. This That's fantastic. Weather is beautiful. We're at 90% now, blue and nice. You see it from your deck. Excellent, Jonathan. Excellent. Um, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, wow. You live down the street, reptile? Excellent, man. It's the definition of an island, something ridiculous, like a plot of land large enough for sheep to survive one year on the grass. What? So we are, never heard of that, Rex Savage. Like we're good to go. Technically, it looks like an island is connected to the mainland at one point. Uh, so there's a causeway that's an artificial man-made causeway for the road to go over Bremo. There's a couple bridges and there's a couple causeways that they go back and forth. I think that's what a causeway is, right? The causeway's man-made, so it's still technically an island. Oh, this, I need a heavier tripod. Y'all. kind of just this bubble. So what does that mean? Like I never stop talking? No, no, the, the causeway's connecting. Oh, the it's like a bubble now. <laughs> it's a tumor. I thought he meant that I was being annoying by never no. talking. Oh, we have flashing a windshield for the mic. Uh, there is a massive windshield on the mic already. T minus 19 um, minutes. T minus 19? Yep. Excellent. So I've got the mic kind of mucked together. Right, um, 
I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it, but there's nothing, I can't touch anything. With this level of zoom, this is like 20X zoom. And uh, with this level of zoom, it's just gonna be bouncing all over the map, y'all. There's not too terribly much that I can do about it. Audio, yeah, I can't do anything about that. Yes. I'm not gonna mess with the settings right now. I'm not gonna mess with the settings. Uh, be glad you have a good camera. It's not a yeah, bad camera, Mycroft. Well, it's gonna it's be, not bad. It's gonna be good. Stop being so annoying on your own stream. <laughs> You'll see the SpaceX stream too. No, Emerald. Um, if you want to watch the actual SpaceX streams, I'm not going to be doing that. I've got all my gear set up here right, right so now, um, but I'm not going to be pulling any of the other streams or anything like that. Um, you get really loud when you lean towards the camera. Yeah, no, you're right, because I get close to the microphone, right? That does make sense, man. I'll just, I'll need to remember to stand back a little bit. Um, that bumpy is video is killing me. The wind is so nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I'm probably going to get sunburned because UV clouds and yeah, right. you know, UV radiation and clouds. But uh, yeah, there's links for the SpaceX stuff. So if you want to watch the SpaceX stuff, um, check out the links that Mutter just put in chat there. But it seems like everything's going fine here. Like the encoding's working fine. You know what was killing it? It was the local recording. Really? Yeah, so I set it. I set OBS to record locally, and that made OBS use like 50% more CPU. Huh. Now OBS is running 20% instead of 70%, and it's not dropping frames. You too used to your uh, streaming rig? Yeah, I didn't. I'm just, you know. Storage on that can't handle it. It's, huh? But the storage on that can't handle it. On the on the laptop? Yeah. No, it can. It's got like a terabyte of. Really? Well, yeah. I need yes. one of those. Nice. <laughs> a terabyte? Yeah, it's got a lot of space. Wow. Yes, spared no expense for the streaming really. Um, let me see here. Excellent. Hey look, fish, are there fish jumping? Did you did y'all saw some fish jumping? Excellent. Don't mind the vibrate the vibration of the audio. Huh? We've seen dolphins here before. Really? Yeah. They've seen dolphins here before. Nice. Guys, is it just me or is the camera just tilted a lot? Like it just really feels like it's getting on my nerves how much the camera is tilted. Is it really bothering anybody yeah, else? Sure on zoom way out there. Slightly higher so the pad is closer. Oh well granted, um, whenever the launch is gonna go, I actually will will release it and I'll hand I'll hand do it. And when the launch goes, y'all aren't gonna look at me, we're just gonna go straight like that for the launch. Okay? So I'm gonna switch I can I got it to where I can switch those things back and forth. Um, this looks reminiscent of the CRS. I can push it up a little bit, it's just I'm being cognizant of the lower frame. You know? And this is not the world's most expensive tripod. Look, you can even see it. After I tighten it in, do you see the tripod go? <laughs> uh, dolphins left of center. Y'all see dolphins out there? What time of year is best to be out here for high probability? There's fish jumping directly in front of the camera. Dolphins in the launch complex is seen about thanks for all the fish. Nice, handsome. It's really good. Ah, yes. Probably just not summer. It's just yeah, any time summer. other than summer? Not summer. We're about to actually have shadows here for the first time. Like, the sun is... We've been in the shadow. Peaking. Well, no, but I mean, we're going to have shadows. Oh, Because well, the sun's coming out from behind the clouds. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 